but welcome to EC Electronics. In this video, we are going to see how to plot the VSWR or how to obtain the VSWR values from your Smith chart. So this is a Smith chart tutorial of VSWR or voltage standing wave ratio. So before going into the Smith chart part, let's see what is actually voltage standing wave ratio. Okay, so VSWR or voltage standing wave ratio. So what is actually this standing wave? So we have to first understand what is actually standing wave. Okay, so for that, let's take a simple example of a pipe. Okay, so this is a pipe and we are going to pass a wave into the pipe. And when the moment, when the wave reaches this end of the pipe, we are going to close this pipe. Okay, so the end is closed now. And what will happen when this end is closed, the wave will reflect back. And when the moment it comes to this portion or when it is reflected and coming to this portion, this end is also closed. Okay, so what will happen here is the wave is going in this direction and hitting this end of the pipe and also it is being reflected from this portion and it is moving backwards to the to this portion also. So the wave is moving to and fro at the same time. Okay, so if we are going to closely see the wave and if the uh, if the transmission and the reflection is happening at a faster rate, we cannot really identify that whether the wave is traveling forward or it is coming back, right? So in such a condition, we can assume this as a standing wave because at the moment it is traveling forward and also it is reflected back. So such a wave, it is assumed to be a still wave or a standing wave. Okay, so it is having a forward motion and a backward motion also. Okay, so uh, this is a case of a simple pipe. Now let's consider that there is a wall and a rope is being tied here. And we are going to make wave motions with this rope. So what will happen when we are making wave motions? So the wave will go in this direction and also back in this direction, right? So this rope has a wave motion of forward and backward direction and if the motion is really fast we cannot really identify whether it is moving for front or it is uh, coming back so if the uh, whether the uh, rope is having a forward motion or a backward motion we cannot identify it right so in such a case we consider that as a standing wave or a still a still rope okay so such a wave is called a standing wave so now we have talked about the general or real world aspects. Now let's talk about the transmission line case. So what is a, a standing wave or how a standing wave is forming in a transmission line? Okay, so uh, let's consider the basic structure of a transmission line. So there is a generator, generator here or it can also be called as a source. Now the source is connected to the transmission line which is this. Okay, so this is the transmission line here and there is a load at the receiving side. So this is the transmitting side and that is the receiving side and in between there is the transmission line. Okay, so this is a general structure of electromagnetic so transmission of electromagnetic waves. So using transmission lines. Now, there are characteristics impedance for source, transmission line and also load. So there is a characteristics impedance for this source, right? Also for there is, uh, for the load there is a characteristic impedance and also for the transmission line there is a characteristic impedance. The maximum power transmission is possible whenever the impedance of the source is equal to impedance of the transmission line and the impedance of the load. That is, all the three of these impedances should match. Or at least we have to take into consideration that the, the impedance, that is the characteristic impedance of the source and the load should be 
equal. That is called nothing but the impedance matching. So this impedance matching ensures that maximum power transmission is possible. That is the impedance or the calcitic impedance of this source should be equal to the load. Okay. So if it is not possible, what will happen is that when a wave is transmitted from the source to the load, the entire power transmitting cannot be received at the receiver side or the load side. So some portion of this transmitted power is reflected back to the source. So some portion of this is reflected back to the source. Okay. So I'll draw in the same wave. So some power that is an entire wave of high power is transmitted from the source to the load. But due to the impedance mismatch, what happens is the entire power cannot be received at the load side or the receiver side. So some portion of the power is transmitted back to the source. And due to this transmitting back of the some power or some wave, this standing wave is happening in the transmission line. Okay, so this is the real world, uh, the, the real case which is happening in the transmission line. So, hence, a standing wave is generated in the transmission line. So, what is happening? Due to the impedance mismatch, the entire power cannot be received. So, some power is transmitted back. So, this reflection happens inside the transmission line. And hence, a standing wave is generated. Now, when the waves are reflected back to the source or the feeder, what happens is that based on the uh, the phase difference of the waves which means being transmitted and the waves which is coming back these waves are either added or subtracted that is it depends upon the phase of the transmitted and the reflected wave okay so I explained that uh, some amount of power is transmitted back from the load or the receiver side to the transmitter side okay now this power can be ex uh, expressed as two types that is the voltage waves and current waves. So, this power waves can be ex expressed as voltage standing waves and current standing waves. Because we know power can be represented as voltage and current. Okay. So, there are two type of waves. That is current waves, current standing waves and voltage standing waves. Now, this is the, this particular waveform is a case when there is a generator there is a load and when the load impedance is greater than the generator impedance and the difference is very slight but here the impedance of the load is greater than that of the generator then the standing waves will look like this. So the upper one this one is the current standing wave and the lower one is the voltage standing wave. Okay. Now, in general for two of this, that is for the current standing wave and the voltage standing wave, we generally call them as standing waves. Now, here we are going to discuss about voltage standing wave ratio. So, uh, before going into the voltage standing wave ratio, there is another term called standing wave ratio it is the term which is common for both the current and the voltage voltage standing waves but the voltage standing wave ratio uh, which we are going to see next I and mean later this voltage standing wave ratio is particularly for the voltage standing waves okay so i told that there is current standing waves and voltage standing waves but this uh, standing wave ratio is some term related to both the waves. That is a general term. But where, uh, where is this voltage standing wave ratio is particularly for the voltage standing waves. And this VSWR or voltage standing wave ratio is equal to V max by V minimum. That is the, when there is a standing wave, the maximum voltage inside the transmission transmitting line 
to the minimum voltage present in the transmission transmission line so that is the voltage standing wave ratio okay so vswr equal to v max by v minima also can be also represented in terms of the reflection coefficient that is 1 plus modulus of reflection coefficient tau by 1 minus modulus of the reflection coefficient so this is your voltage standing wave ratio and this ratio is happening when there is a standing wave present in the transmission line and this standing wave as i told is generated due to the impedance mismatch present in the uh, in the transmission line okay or when there is an impedance mismatch between the source and the receiver or the load okay so we have uh, discussed the basics of the voltage standing wave ratio next we are going to see how to plot this uh, voltage standing wave ratio circle or how to obtain the value of the voltage standing wave ratio from your smith chart okay now i'm going to show how to obtain your vswr circle and the vswr value from your smith chart okay so before doing that you have to first plot your uh, normalized load impedance onto the smith chart so we have done uh, a video on that that how to plot it and the steps before plotting it so please do watch that video if you're not familiar with that okay so here i'm going to use a load impedance is equal to 100 minus j 100 ohm and my uh, line impedance or z zero equal to 50 ohm so my normalized load impedance equal to uh 50 100 by 2 sorry 100 by 50 that is 2 and for normalizing this i have to divide this 100 by 50 again so minus j 2 o so this is the normalized uh, load impedance so first you have to normalize the resistance part which is this and the reactance part which is the uh, imaginary part that is this okay so now you will be getting a normalized load impedance of 2 minus 2j now you have to plot this to the smith chart so first for that you have to uh, see where the that is where is your two value in the resistance line so this is the resistance line and the two value is here we can see it very clearly and it is here and this circle this circle is your resistance circle okay that's this one now you have to uh, look for your minus 2j and it is in the re reactant circle and it is occurring in the negative side so it will be here so your 2 is here so this is your minus 2j so you have to mark this arc and find the intersecting point it with the the resistance circle so this is the point of intersection so this is your EZL normalized that is your normalized load impedance the value is 2 minus 2 g ohms okay so this is your point now what you have to do is in order to obtain the VSWR circle you have to again draw a circle by first keeping your compass here that is the center of the smith chart it is a one i hope you can see it is a one and which is the center right so this is the center so keep your compass here and take this as the radius so the next point that is your pencil you will come here and this is your radius now draw a circle by taking this much of radius and your circle will go like this and that is your vswr circle okay now I have drawn my circle which is not very neat but you have to uh, keep this in mind that this is your center and this is your next point and this is your radius and you have to draw a circle and you have to look for points which crosses this line okay so here you can see it this is 4 this is 4.1 and this is 4.2 okay so this point is crossing the resistance line so this is your vswr circle and this point is your vswr so here for this particular case that for this load normalized load impedance your vswr value is 4.2 
that is your VSWR equal to 4.2. So you have to take uh, this thing in mind that you have to keep this as center and this normalized load impedance point as your next point and you have to take this radius and draw a circle and you will obtain your VSWR circle. So I really hope that you understood how to draw the VSWR circle and how to obtain the VSWR value. Please do share this video with your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to the channel also. Thank you.